I am a bioinformatician from the research group. And so to, yesterday and today, you heard a lot about how NextFlow is used in the um, production pipelines. And I will give you a little touch how it is also used in the scientific projects, uh, like a smaller case. Um, so usually, when someone sequences a genome, they want to know something about the function of the genome. For example, uh, what, what are the genes or what are the um, pathways that affect the water depletion in the plants or some diseases or any other important question. And of course, it is done through the studying of the genome itself and the genes. And um, it works like this. So usually it starts with the assembly when people do shotgun. They, uh, then it goes to the gene annotation. And for this, a lot of pipelines also exist. But uh, gene, genes, when they are annotated out of the assembly, it just um, coordinates in the genome. And some sequence is some abbreviatory instead of the name. So it doesn't tell to the researcher anything about the function of the gene. It looks exactly like this on the left side. Okay, that, therefore, um, uh, we perform so-called functional annotation. So add some function element to the sequences to get the knowledge of the, what, what the sequence does. And after all this process is finished, then all the downstream analysis can be run, all the, this nice RNA seq thing, chip seq, and, and everything else. Um, and this process, so the process on the left side, no, oh, I did. Okay, it's something, something else. Okay, so the process on the left side repeated multiple times usually because it it is back and forward uh, between the improving of the assembly, the improving of the annotation, and um, uh, so we we needed the pipeline that allows you to rerun nearly the same things multiple times. Uh, and just to dig a little bit into functional annotation, what exactly I mean, it's so we take a protein sequence and to this protein sequence we add some functional uh, elements. Therefore, like uh, whether it belongs to the specific family, where it can be localized, which domains it has, and mainly, of course, it is done through the sequence similarity. Okay, so there are, of course, as for everything, there are two ways. So people started with the manual annotation at the beginning. It is very, uh, um, it's usually it's very accurate, uh, but it is low throughput. Usually, it's a scientist who takes his favorite protein and then does a lot of experiments, and then. This is how the initial database was built. So now we have a few reference database which can be used for the annotation of the other proteins. The thing of the automatic annotation is that it is um, also it's cheap and high throughput. It is error prone and it is uh, um, tend to accumulate the errors. So if someone annotated wrongly the protein and then added it to the da database, then this error will be multiplied multiple times. So therefore, um, and, uh, we similar to the other pipelines as we discussed before here, our pipeline has a specificity that we need always the kind of latest version of the database, cl clean it. We, people really need always check which tools they want to use. So a little bit more about the theory again. So from the uh, annotation, there is obviously direct output, and also there is indirect output that um, with the annotation of the protein, you can detect um, uh, possible contaminants, for example, that lead them for the reassembling of the genome and the starting the process from the scratch. If, for example, you found that uh, some proteins suddenly belong to the wrong taxon, uh, and also, it allows to filter out unnecessary uh, false positive hits from the gene annotation. So at the end of the day, also this is a very small task in the whole process of the uh, the genome uh, assembly and analysis. 
this this step is very very important for for scientists. Uh, so this is our pipeline, which we started many many years ago, and therefore it's con uh, incorporate many different tools that allows different processes. So we start with the protein protein sequences, and we have a database that uh, accumulates all the information. Um, important thing that the most important in this pipeline, not the tools that run, for example, the interprocan is just a tool that run against the database, but the parsing and processing the output of these uh, tools. So we had a lot of uh, scripts that that does parsing and analysis of the output of each program. Therefore, when we decided to go for um, next law, okay, we started to consider pluses and minuses first. So obvious plus, well, here people discuss a lot of pluses for next law. Of course, it is very, in our case, we even had a master script that that was written in Perl that orchestrates all these things and check dependencies. So in our case, it was easy integration because we already had the master script, so we just we needed to transfer from one to another. And what I, I myself really like that it can be resumed at any moment if something went wrong. But at the same time, I can put it to the minuses because if one of the process failed, Let's say if domain prediction failed, then uh, partologous prediction will never end because all the processes killed at the same time. Um, then we found that because the next law allows very easy parallelization, it creates a lot of small processes. Then all the small processes trying to access the database at the same time, and the database simply became blocky. Especially, it is a problem for the SQLite, which we used before. Um, now we switch for the MySQL. There are another problem that user need to be a root, but this Tony will talk about this. But um, like normal solution for the um, scientists in bioinformatics was the SQL light, and SQL light simply didn't work here because it was completely blocked. Uh, another thing that, as I mentioned before, that we need. Uh, latest, we, we need the latest software. So this is a kind of also kind of minus for next floor because for for us to rebuild the container or to reinstall the software actually takes nearly the same time. And um, of course, it's very good for the end users that we can provide and they can install from the scratch. But this is require more additional work from our side. Anyway. There were more, many more pluses than minuses, and well, this is this is schematic. It's <laughs> probably many of you have kind of same same thing. So it's a lot of tiny tiny processes that end up in the um, uh, end up in the annotation, and um, so far everyone was happy with the files that we provided the one. And one of the minuses was that the uh, Nextflow creates a folder with all the intermediate files and some of the tools. They create um, individual files for every database they search. So we had a huge folder that we were needed to delete afterwards, and the only solution was just to delete folder at the end of the process. And if it will be possible to find a solution for this problem to, to delete intermediate file, that would be really helpful. Um, so, cur current version of the pipeline is um, on the GitHub, so everyone can have it. Um, so now we do support MySQL, and as um, as I mentioned, we even needed the pipeline that uh, that you need to rerun proteins, and you need you we even needed a very fast tool to compare proteins. And actually, we use very simple solution. We use MD5 to Zoom. Maybe it's not the best one, but this was definitely the fastest one. And if when you're talking about fast comparison of 20,000 proteins, this is definitely was the fastest one. Um, and because this pipeline is used 
usually in many projects at the same time, we have a configuration file for project. So we have an XFlow configuration file with the containers pass, pass to the output files, but also each project contains something like this that uh, contains the species name, uh, well, database engine, well, the species from the CAC. And then you can have uh, multiple projects and run at the same time, and it's easy, easy to track trackable. Um, so, these are tools we support nowadays. So, raw scripts are written in, in Perl. That is no one use anymore. <laughs> but um, we decided not to invest time for the rewriting of the scripts now because they work actually pretty well. And for parsing, it's, it's a good job. Uh, but instead of this, we made a container, which is also kind of okay. May maybe sometime we will invest time and rewrite the scripts, but I'm not sure. So some tools can be installed locally on the containers, but other tools we, we access via, via API. And the, the, in this field, tools are constantly changing. So you, you have one tool that you used before, and then you need to switch to another tool. This is not like a RNA-seq alignment when you have a standard tool. Uh, well, yeah, and then explain. OK. Yeah. OK, so now we continue. So basically, as Hazan explained, we have this situation. No? There was this pipeline. This pipeline, it was, it was a mess in a lot of different scripts. It was actually working. Uh, many people from, uh, from, from her lab yeah, uh, was having uh, good results, getting good publications, no? Uh, and so, okay, so we could we have to find a way to uh, not to stop, let's say, the things for a long time, so things were working, but try to maintain it in a better way, try to uh, run things in a in a more straightforward way in the cluster. So what, uh, I don't know how I can see this, but remember, maybe we, has a, we had a similar project in our facility. So we try to find a way to combine all things, and I must say, I think uh, it was Emilio that was already working with the next full pipeline. Yeah, and at a certain point, okay, okay. I assume, I try to assume and try to put things into a container to try to control things a bit more. Because otherwise, things were running from the, from the, from the scripts from the, 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 the common system. And if there were any change or whatever, that, that was a mess. Yeah? So the, I think my, my main job was trying to, to keep things a bit more containerized and then run from the, from the, from the next flow. So for, for sake of, uh, of, uh, of well, of information a bit this in the end the pipeline so far now we have to we have a uh, four say four containers okay so before there's, a, there's an ongoing discussion always uh, okay every process should be a container or we should put everything into into the same into the same same container no for our case what we did is trying to have a kind of salomonic solution so try to to have things that would make sense at the maintenance level in in one container and things that maybe were uh, maintain a different way in another one. Let's suppose, for instance, uh, the Pella scripts and all these we were using for parsing, we kept in a, in a, in a container, we, we consider it was a very specific thing, but for, for other stuff, we keep another one. Let's say for Blast, at the beginning we have our own Blast container, what we did is trying to use the one from NCBI, and now from a, from a, from a few months they are maintaining this, that's okay. Then we had other containers, that it's another delicate thing, that uh, uh, for Interprospan, Interprospan, uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm talking too much here. I don't know if you are following, but uh, for inter for interproscan, uh, let's say it's a. I don't know if many of you, how many of you know interproscan? We no, no, not so many. Okay, it's kind of a woof, old-fashioned tool. I think it's a, it's a it's a big Java it's a big Java wrapper that uh, analyzes everything and then runs a lot of different programs. So it's, it's kind of a, for parallelizing through containers. It's kind of a mess. So actually, <laughs> well, we, are, we are putting in a container for having it control. Eh? But we are not taking so much advantage of all the all the parallelization process, no? And they also updating constantly. So so we have to actually we have mounting points for the database on one side, and then all the programs, and then you have also privative programs. Okay, so you have there is kind of a plain version that might be open source program, and there are a few other ones that are are closed, so or closed or academic, you know, all these kind of widely licenses. So for all these, it not, was not so easy to have uh, to have uh, uh, in Docker Hub all this stuff. So we are keep, keeping singularity images. So this was also a good, a strong point for having singularity images. But then that's a kind of a mess as 
well for keeping things. So, so let's say in the future, now we are keeping all them, but the single time images, images are in our, in our storage. But we are going to provide, let's say, kind of light versions so people can use without having to, you know, all the process and all this. Uh, and the same with other tools, Signal P, Target P, that are very old fashioned tools that people still are using. Well, okay, that's a, a bit the situation. So I already explained a bit this, that is helpful to this. We put uh, uh, all the scripts uh, in Pell. So that's, uh, there's also another problem. Actually, yesterday we were, we were, uh, we were checking things before the presentation. And, and we noticed that suddenly the, the, the main image start, stopped working. Okay, so we put into the repository and think it's something what happened, no? So, uh, the Pell scripts, the new version of BioPell, I don't know if you know, it was a very, it's one of the old, uh, old, uh, old libraries for parsing, parsing, uh, parsing, uh, biological sequences. There was a new version from the end of August, and then it make it crash everything, okay? We didn't notice before because some catching thing, whatever, so we had to change. So we had to put some specific version there. What happened? That's something that you might have noticed that depending on the software you use, they might be uh, better or worse regarding the handling of version. For instance, I noticed that the Pell maybe is not as good, let's say, as Python maybe in that sense of uh, version control. That version of BioPell sadly was not in Conda. So as we were checking that version, we were using 1.75 and the last version in, in Conda is 1.72. So sometimes you, you, you have this situation that is a bit tricky. So you have to be careful. You actually have to put in the Docker file. We can show you later. I don't know how I'm, I'm time. That uh, the things that, that you have to be very controlled. This still is 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 a big is a big problem. It's a big problem. And well, this I already explained. So try to keep the versions more the control the better. And you have also this decision. You can make your own containers yourself. Let's say we could have our own blast uh, blast container for ourselves, or we could trust in another one from a a, a well trusted. Uh, uh, provider, no? I think NCBI is a good one, so we, in the end we, we choose, okay, you take care of this, and that's all, no? Um, and then one challenge, we would like to have a discussion with have time, is how, how in these situations of private software, this, how we can share more effectively, no? Okay, and then let me explain just this uh, sad story, I don't know if sad, uh, in the end it was a success, but uh, how, how we handle this problem with SQLite, no? SQLite, because it was this blocking process, there were a lot of processes trying to write into the same the same file because it's a database with the file, and then uh, the drama it was also is in an F NFS system that is even worse. Okay, so how we could handle this? Okay, MySQL could be could be an option, uh, but the thing is, in MySQL you should have a server that is defined before you need to see root access and all this. So the other solution we found to try to avoid this, so you don't need to contact the system administrator and all this, so you run the pipeline and that's all, is trying to use containers from MySQL. And that's, and that's possible. That's something we did. Uh, we did it in an HPC system. And for that, we used a singularity. Since we have singularity, there's one option of singularity that many people maybe don't know, is that you can have services, instances, they name. So you run singularity, it runs there, and then if your cluster, you have access from other, from other nodes of the, of the cluster, you can, you can query this. Um, here, that's actually something I asked to, to, to That's something that they have an issue. Hey, would it be possible to have a kind of background process, a test process that you, you start at the beginning and then you can, yeah, uh, in the end the back was closed, but I, I keep it there just in case in the future. <laughs> because in order to have this functionality, now what we are having is kind of a wrapper script that tries to handle all this. You know? It's a bit dirty, yeah? So um, this is what I'm showing you here. It's kind of, ooh, I don't know, you can see, it's kind of a hard. So we have this config file. And then, okay, so we have, uh, this is inside uh, NetFlow. Hey, do we have MySQL working? If so, then for every process that uses MySQL, try to add the config file for pointing to the, to the uh, IP, let's say, in the, in the cluster, in cluster node where it is, no? So it's kind of a hacky thing, no? So it's something that uh, if ever in the future could be, could be integrated, no? So the process that starts at the beginning and then it finishes. That would be good, no? So in the end, when the pipeline is finished, we simply say, okay, there is my, MySQL going on here. So since we are putting kind of a file that is marking, that is putting, okay, MySQL is running, so we simply, we kill it. Okay? So we have at the beginning MySQL is starting, but from a badge, from a wrapper script, and at the end of the pipeline, when everything is gone, either from a completion or an error, we stop it, yeah? You see, it's a kind of a dirty thing, but it works. It works nice. So I'm finishing. Of the challenges, so we have to remind and have discussion if possible. Software licenses, 
Yeah? So having the containers of this, so it's a it's kind of a challenge, especially if we want to share among people. The library dependencies, what I commented before, with you, we we fail. Some languages might be better to handle this than other, but if you are dealing with legacy code, it's it's kind of a it's a pain. Uh, some memory issues, let's say with Java based software, this especially is the case of Interpro. So sometimes there is a lot of crashing. Let's say it, when we run Interpro scan, it crashes a lot of time. So we have to put a retry in the next flow in order to ensure that the the whole pipeline is not finished. Uh, it's kind of a statistical thing that maybe three from five they they crash and of course you don't want to you don't want that everything is stopped because of this. No. Also with APIs, uh, since uh, there is this compromise that uh, either you install in your system all the databases, all the problems to take this, but this requires also maintenance. No. Sometimes that uh, APIs might be more convenient to get this information, but of course then this leads to some bottlenecks because until you finish all the API processes. There are things you cannot go, so it's, it's something that, I don't know, if you have experience uh, uh, including API processes in your, your, in your pipelines, I would be happy uh, to have your, your suggestion. Uh, also, one thing more in the end is do we actually need all these database things? Maybe we are, trying, we are doing something that we should not do that way. Maybe they would be handled a different way, I don't know. Uh, all the thing of intermediate files that uh, Anna was discussing. Of course, it's very nice having the, the, the work directory that you have all the files there because you can receive all this. But if you are running out of a space and then there is quota and this means money, that's, that's it's a problem. No? Of course, all the time for development, this represents, no? And also rationalization of the parameters, no? So which parameters we should use? Are we putting more or less parameters? Should be handled that way or the other? And that's it, more or less. So, are you say in the last? Well, yeah, I'm sorry if you were kind of fast and you didn't get it, but I hope you got it. I want to thank very much for the um, bioinformatic core facility that uh, did this pipeline and presentation knowledge of the other uh, people's book. And of course, for Paolo for help with the next talk. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, yes. What, what you are doing at the is uh, okay. At the end, the uh, MySQL service is uh, is done, and uh, the machines, if all the processes are using this uh, that are running are using the system. Ah, for the MySQL, different processes are running against uh, against the MySQL. I mean, every pro you mean for every project has a database name, okay? So for the for SQLite, every file is is a database. But MySQL, you can have different different databases, of course, into the same server. So let's suppose that we are analyzing, I know, uh, Drosophila Venagogaster and Canoravitis elegans, no? So from different people, and actually, indeed, would not be the, what we normally do since we are running this MySQL server. It's not a centralized MySQL server. But actually, instances of this, uh, the only thing we are trying to be careful is trying to change the port. Okay, the default port of MySQL is 3306. Maybe what we are trying to do is maybe every project has a different port. Okay, for avoiding ah, that's not, that's bad. Yeah, eh? It's difficult, not difficult. Yeah, because it might happen if there are different organisms and they are addressing the same IP and the same port. In the end, it would create another database, and that's all. But let's suppose it was the same species, okay? Then it would be a. Yeah. 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 Client for JDBC, they use MySQL done. Mm -hmm. So it's not, a, it's not a library. Library they can manage the connector. It's much easier. Uh -huh. You connect the Google, you don't have the prioritization mess. You can have just a, a little routine that talks with the database and serial manner. Okay. But so then every process still have their own chat, right? You can use the process for the image of the pipeline. They serialize with an operator to specialize tasks to talk with the database. Mm. 
tad viss, jā, jā, tad viņš atpēc tas mēs. So do you, do you do something like the breathing on those databases, or you just yes. like yes. you know, yes. 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 But reading kind of is not a problem. Problem was uh, indeed writing, because writing is just the change the database. So what is the certain processes you have like a local SQL database and then upon completion you just dump some kind of file and then you open it. Well, yes, this was kind of my attempt. <laughs> And also, I was trying to put a delay in the next flow that, like, do not write at the same time, but it didn't help. It was, uh, it was like for small project it worked, but then when we scaled to the main project, it just simply was blocked. Uh, maybe you can try to dump the information in files, create a workflow, and have a single process that writes everything again. Um, yes, this, this we also tried this. This was kind of um, okay, but yeah, I think it's some process depend on the previous thing, and we put things. So we should we should review in the end. We should review uh, strongly many of these things. And as I we explained to you, we try to get into a process. This works. Let's try to uh, maybe it's not a good thing to say. Yeah, let's try to hack it a bit so it can work better. But uh, maybe we need a, a strong refactoring. Yeah, maybe for a in this. Yes, yes, we do have it. Yes, 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 we do have it. Yeah. Of course. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We are, so the nice thing of this pipeline that it was like constantly revising these tools and it's still re we, we do monitor which tools appear. Well, for example, when we started, last to go was open for everyone and it was like a free software and of course we use it a lot, but now it's not free anymore and that we cannot say that we will include it in the pipeline, but people cannot use it. So this kind of not here. Yeah, we are using another solution. And this is yeah. exactly what what Tony mentioned that about licensing is a very strong issue in this field, because one, once the good tool appears, that like within a year they really turn and trying to be commercial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. <laughs>